It's really tough to romanticize the birth of Jesus. We try, but it is very difficult. You see, Mary and Joseph most likely cleaned, they most likely cleaned that manger the best they could that one night long ago. They most likely put some sort of padding in that manger in some way to make a comfy bed for Jesus, for the infant child. However, in the end, the fact still remains, the fact still remains that the Son of God was not laid in a royal cradle, if you will, but instead he was laid in a common corn crib itself. Yes, you heard that correctly, a corn crib. Now, just to make sure we're all on the same page, a manger was not the building, was not the building where Jesus was born. Instead, a manger, it's a feeding trough. It's a feeding trough for animals. A manger was made of wood. It was an open box that would hold scraps of food that were to be eaten by common farm animals, cattle, horses, donkeys, if you get the picture. Now, it's also interesting to note that the word manger comes from a Latin word, yes, a Latin word that means to chew or to eat. Again, to drive this point home, a manger was typically unfinished, splintery, and most definitely smelly. And yet, tonight... This afternoon, we remember the story, we hear the words of Scripture, that the Son of God, the creator of the universe, was laid on display in a common corn crib that was meant for horses, cattle, and donkey. He was put in a feeding trough. But why was this the case? Indeed, why was this the case? Well, as you know, there was no room for Mary and Joseph in the inn, as we heard tonight, And so the necessity demanded that they spend the night with smelly animals. However, we must be careful not to think that this was some sort of fluke, some random misfortune for Jesus, some random misfortune for Joseph and Mary. It wasn't as if Joseph said, you know, shucks, Mary, by golly, they're all out of rooms tonight. We have bad luck tonight. Not even an overpriced hotel suite for us to ante up and stay the night. Looks like we got to go to the barn tonight. Shucks, Mary. My dear friends, it is imperative, it's important for us to understand that laying the newborn child in a manger, it was planned. It was the way that it was supposed to be. Keep in mind that Mary and Joseph, they went to Bethlehem due to a census being ordered by Caesar Augustus. In other words, God arranged that the most powerful ruler in the world at that time would influence Mary and Joseph to go to Bethlehem, the place in the scriptures where it was prophesied that where the Messiah was to be born. And so if God could bend the arm of a Roman Empire and the Caesar at that time to get one man and one pregnant woman to travel from Nazareth all the way to Bethlehem, God could have, well, he could have most certainly made room for them in the end. The point being, the birth of Jesus in that manger is exactly where it was meant to be. The plan all along was for the Son of God to be born and laid in a dirty feeding trough. It was meant to be. But why a feeding trough, though? Yes, why a feeding trough? Why a manger? This Christmas, we think about this feeding trough, and it really comes down to this, that the Christian faith, your Christian faith, my Christian faith, the Christian faith that we are here Four, this Christian faith has absolutely nothing to do, now hear me loud and clear, it has nothing to do with keeping up with the Joneses down the street. Your God does not have any interest in striving to meet the social standards of the world. God, he does not care. He does not care about man-made benchmarks of class, prestige, power, and so forth. He just does not care which is why the Savior of the world was born to a poor peasant girl in a tiny little town, in a tiny enslaved country, in a stinky little manger. Your Jesus started life low, putting on flesh low. In a lot of ways, indeed, there's a lot of ways, there's a spiritual parallel between Jesus' birth and the Christian church. Permit me an opportunity to explain Like that manger that held Christ Jesus, the infant child, the Christian church is like that manger as well. You see, the church, such as St. Paul's, is nothing but an empty wooden box. 
There's actually nothing special about the church, nothing important about the church, except that the church, in the church, Christ is really present. He's really present for you and for me. And so you and I are like those, we could say like those stinky animals. Take your choice, cattle, donkey, so forth. We're like a stinky animal that comes to the manger of the church to feast not upon oats or barley, but to feast upon Christ and his gifts for us. But it is important to understand and keep in mind that not all mangers, indeed not all mangers have Christ, and neither do all sermons teach the true faith. If the manger did not have Jesus lying in swaddling cloths, well, the manger would have been nothing special. Remember those shepherds? Those shepherds, they did not go all the way to Bethlehem to rejoice and praise God over a dirty, empty wooden box. The point being, without the Christ, that manger would have stayed an empty box. There would have been nothing special about that manger, nothing special about that place in that time. And the same goes for the church. If St. Paul's Lutheran Church fails to preach Christ, fails to preach Christ Jesus, and fails to give out and deliver his good gifts to his children, the gifts of baptism, absolution, and the Lord's Supper, then this church is no longer a manger of Christ, but a manger of nothingness. Nothing more than an empty box. Nothing more than a space of vacuous air. Dear friends, mark this. Mark this this evening. There are way too many churches in America that are gathering this evening around an empty manger. They have spent thousands of dollars on church property and pastoral salaries and programs and the like to do absolutely nothing. Just as there was no room for Jesus in the end, there is no room for Jesus in some of these churches either. And so, baptized saints, may the Lord protect us. May protect us here at St. Paul's from foolishly peddling a manger without Christ. Back to the manger, though. With the Christ, your Jesus was born in Bethlehem, as we have already heard. He was laid in that manger, as we've already established, to start this journey, putting on flesh in a very low place. In fact, your Jesus started so low, and he ended even lower still. Now consider our reading from this last Wednesday as well at our evening prayer service this last Wednesday. We read this. Though Jesus was in the form of God, he did not count equality with God as a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking on the form of a servant, starting his life lower than a servant in a feeding trough, we could say. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. This is how it works with your Jesus, with Jesus. From infinite deity to a feeding trough to a bloody cross, hear that again, from infinite deity to a feeding trough to a wooden cross, your Jesus came. He did this work for you. He descended so low that no sinner would be beneath him. And so, friends, open your ears tonight. Chins up. Back straight. Jesus is found at the bottom where you and I can receive him. At the bottom. He's not at the top competing with the Joneses. He's not out of your reach. But he is with you and me at our worst. With his very best. The forgiveness of sins. He is with you in the manger called St. Paul's Lutheran Church to feed you with his word and his sacraments. He is with you to forgive you of your darkest sins. He is with you when the shadows of death encroach upon you. He is with you in death and will be with you at the very end of the days. Baptized saints, fear not, for this is good news. Actually, we could say it's great news. A Savior was born unto you and was wrapped in swaddling cloths and laid in a manger for you. And this same Savior, he wraps himself in with and under the bread and the wine for you in the Lord's Supper. He is in that trough of this font to wash you. He is in his holy words spoken to you this very afternoon and this evening. And so, 
He comes to us. He descends lowly to us to give us good gifts. And so we say glory to God in the highest. Unto you a child has been born and laid in a manger for you, dear friends. Glory to God in the highest. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas indeed.